Hey everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Abby and this is Spend More Time in the Wild, a YouTube channel and an online and offline platform organisation essentially with the goal of inspiring and empowering people to get outside for the benefit of mental and physical health whilst building meaningful connections with the natural world and with each other. Really pumped to be bringing you another gear review today, which is hopefully gonna help you access the outdoors and have some flipping awesome adventures. Just before I do, don't forget to head to our online store where we have just launched our brand new buffs. So we have, well, Net Gators, Buff is a brand, they're Net Gators. So we have this in orange, this is mine, well used and worn uh, with the Stay Wild logo across it. And we've also got a beautiful olive green one. We've spent more time in the wild. They are made out of 100% recycled plastic. You can't go wrong as we're moving into the autumn and winter seasons. Head on to the store, spend more time in the wild.co.uk and get your order in today. Let's jump down to this review. So we are looking at this wee wonder. This is the Terra Nova Starlight One. So it's a one season or rather a one person, three season backpacking, hiking, cycle packing, bike packing, fill in the blank, um, lightweight tent. So designed for one person and it's three season as I mentioned. So what that generally means is to use between spring and autumn. So I'm here in the Scottish Highlands right now, flipping freezing, possibly on the edge of the comfort zone of this tent. And I've wanted to wait for autumn so you can see sort of what it's like, how it blends in with the autumnal colors as well, with regards to if you're trying to look to do some stealth camping or wild camping, um, and sort of just how it feels fitting in uh, my woolly sleeping bag, my winter sleeping bag, um, if you were to use this sort of towards the, the, the colder ends of spring and autumn. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig into this, dive in deep, hopefully give you all the information you need to know to decide whether this is a tent that you wanna go for to kickstart some future adventures. So literally starting nice and simple, you can see we've got the, the, the package here, packs down real small, and that is why they really advertise this tent as a bike packing tent more than anything else. You know, it can sit nice and easy in a, excuse me, <coughs> it could sit nice and easy in a pannier. It could sit nice and easy in a pannier, just slide it in on the side of your bike, um, or it could sit on top of your bike on the pannier rack as well. So it weighs in at 1.12 kilograms. So, I mean, if you were to round that up, you could call it 1.2 kilograms, round it down, 1.1. Um, if you were to strip out and swap out the pegs and things, you could probably get it down to a kilogram, no big deal, um, which for a free season tent really isn't too bad. The slight ouch point for this tent, as with many um, sort of the top end or top spec tents, is the price. It retails at £530. But as I like to say with every single gear review or, or tent review especially that I do, make sure you shop around. You don't always have to buy new. And actually, it's a much more environmentally conscious thing to do to buy secondhand. Something like on Facebook, Outdoor Gear Exchange, you can usually find what you're looking for through on there. I mean, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of people on that group from across the globe so if you're looking for something why not put a post up and see if you can find it that being said if you do want to buy this one new Terra Nova very often have good sales on and actually if you are trying to be environmentally conscious they're a real nice company to sort of kick things off with or to get involved with I mean literally on the end here it says Derbyshire England Der Der Derbyshire Derbyshire English is hard sometimes uh, and, and, and basically they, they make all of their stuff uh, in the UK or as much as possible in the UK. They you know, really like to consider environmental um, aspects of things. And if something goes wrong, you can send it to their warehouse and they're gonna fix it up for you, uh, which is just a really nice thing to consider. And I'm pretty sure they've got to um, send old gear in, get money off scheme. I'm sure there's a much better time for that than me and marketing. <laughs> Um, but anyway, it packs down nice and small. I think it's, I mean, you could average that out as about 30 centimeters there in length and, and width is, is pretty tiny. So it's a tunnel design tent as opposed to dome or anything else. And it's got two poles as we're gonna see that sort of the main stability, the ridges of this tent. Um, so it's a really nice one to use if you're gonna be in quite a windy exposed environment. It's low profile as we're gonna see as well. So um, let's get down to it. The, Bag here has got a wee handle on the end, which is quite nice if you're trying to get everything out of it. And the bag itself is actually, it's, it's, I, I believe it's made of the same fabric as the, the ground sheet, which we're going to come to when we get everything out um, in, a, in a wee bit. But uh, it's nice and robust, so uh, it's just basically going to be snag proof, you know, with the weave, uh, the denier. Um, so not that the bag is a make or break, oh, nice bag, um, but just worth letting you guys know that. 
we've got a drawstring on the end here i always like to leave the labels on things you know why not <laughs> uh, and basically can get right into so the drawstring is made out of the guy ropes i'm going to come to all of that and then to use the nifty handle here's the tent exciting so let's get stuck in we've got the main bulk of the tent here and we're going to come to the fabrics in a little bit um, we've got the poles here and we have got the pegs so to kick things off with the poles they are 8.64 millimeters reflex poles. So I've, I've tried to pack everything up as it would be, or as it was when I got this tent. Um, I really want you guys to see exactly what the experience is gonna be like. Um, so basically they're pre-curved as well um, to sort of just help with the longevity of these poles. Here we go, look, let's get it all out. So we've got the blue and we've got the red because obviously we've got the two different ridges and we'll see how all of those put together when we put the tent up in a minute. And we've got a nice little repair sleeve as well, which comes with it. So all branded. Um, and what it means by reflex, essentially they're Terra Nova own poles. Um, so they've basically got that give, that bend. I'm, I'm not gonna snap a tent pole right now. Uh, but if you're in strong winds, there's gonna be that malleability against the winds. So it's bouncing back and hopefully you're never gonna end up with a crack, especially if you're looking after your kit. So those are the poles and here's an example here of the pre-bend that's already in place. Um, just to again, really aid the longevity and stability of the poles, the blue and the red, nice colors. Shame sometimes that poles get covered in these non-freestanding tents, but there we go. Anyway, that's that, and they come in a, a very big pouch, actually. <laughs> I mean, good snack pouch, that one. I'm always thinking of the snacks. And then we have the pegs. So the pegs, uh, some people might want to swap out, some people might not. There are nine pegs, I believe. Let's undo everything. It took me ages to package all this back up. Polish everything, you know. Let's go through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. These tent pegs are alloy, so they look very much like your very stereotypical old school tent pegs, um, but they are alloy. They are reasonably lightweight as well. These have been specially manufactured for a lot of Terra Nova products. Um, personally, I swap these out because I prefer um, sort of the V-shaped pegs. I just find them much easier to get in the ground and fumble around with with cold hands. So um, those are the peg situation, but solid as a rock and they'll do the job. Pop them there and they come with a little sleeve as well. And then we have the tent itself, which is super, super exciting. Um, so basically the way this design works is you can put up the, uh, the outer by itself or the outer and the inner together. And that's certainly the simplest option. Um, it sort of just depends how, how you're trying to really focus on your weight and what you're doing with your time, essentially. Uh, but we've got, obviously, the ground sheet, sort of the inner fabric, which is nice and yellow, and the fly sheet here, uh, which is the bit that covers and really protects you from the elements. So different companies tend to use a different wording for the fabric it's, that they use. It's quite challenging at times because it's not always standardised. But generally speaking, you have your waterproofing measurement and you have the weave of the fabric. So how how snag proof and tear proof it's gonna be against rocks and brambles and bushes and stuff like that. So here we have the fly sheet of this tent. So this has got a hydrostatic head, the waterproofing of 3000 millimeters. Um, and they use water block fabric, essentially it's nylon um, and it's ripstop nylon. So it doesn't really give us a lot of information other than the fact that, you know, it should, it, it's been weaved and designed so it doesn't snag and it doesn't catch. Nothing is impossible, worth looking after your kit, especially at the cost of this, but um, that's essentially what they sell this as. Then the ground sheet, which is the thing that's in contact with the ground at all times that your tent is up. This obviously needs to be a tighter weave, so it's even more snag resistant, because you know if you're thinking about this, you're throwing it out, it might catch on a bramble on a rock, something like that. Um, so it is ripstop, and their waterproofing on this is water block and the hydrostatic head is 7,000 millimetres. So generally speaking, to give you a wee comparison there, if you're looking at a four season tent, they tend to be on the ground sheet, sort of 10 to 12,000 millimetre hydrostatic head. And it's all to do with the pressure and the amount of water that, or, that the, the fabric can resist at any given time. Um, definitely recommend a Google if you really want to pick that apart, but essentially it should keep you good. <laughs> um, then we've got the inner fabric, which is this really nice mesh, breathable stuff cool orange which I always find quite snazzy on a cold dark autumnal day um, or quite snazzy on a warm bright spring summer's day so there we go I think the next thing to do is to get this tent up you can see it in action we'll go through some of the features we'll go through sort of where the pegs and poles go and how you can tension things and keep this um, nice and 
upright. <laughs> um, and then I'll leave you to make a conclusion about the tent for yourself. Let's do it. Putting up the tent really couldn't be any easier. You literally line up the red pole sleeve with the red pole and the same with the blue and then pull out all of the pegging points which are on the tent and the guy lines themselves. Now there's two pegging out points which are elastic on the side of the tent which just basically help to create this airflow section between the inner and the outer because of course with this tent you can pitch the inner and the outer separately and they attach with these elastic toggles on the inside of the tent. At the back of the tent, there is a guy line pulling out. And when you pull that out and get nice and tense, there's a good ventilation point up on the top. And then the guy lines themselves are actually made out of Dyneema reflective fabric. They're very thin, very strong, and they use the classic crocodile clip to keep the tension in place. Right, the tent is up. Really, really easy to pitch. You know, you're just literally putting in the two poles and then pegging it out. And we have got nine pegging out points, it turns out. I added them up. I can do maths. Um, and then we're left with basically this front access point here. Uh, we've got this nice big door which just unzips, as we can see, all the way up. And then it rolls on this side here. So if I come over here, la di da di da. You've got two clipping out points or clipping up points, a little doggle, doggle, toggle, geez, English. <laughs> and super simple to get that out of the way, which is really nice because quite a few of Terra Nova's tents, like their clipping back system for the doors are not great. This works, which I'm very happy to share with you. And then we've got this, um, this front porch here, which, you know, I'm 5'7 for reference. Sort of my shoulders touch either side so you can see it's a wee bit tight but there's there's enough space in here to to keep things to cook obviously you've got this nice viewpoint looking out over your mountainous horizon uh, which is super great you've got this rain sleeve as well here on the top just basically if you wanted to sort of unzip this this part here on the top and you've got a wee bit of protection from the rain might be right which might be blowing your way um, and really there's not a lot more more to say about this um, what I'm going to do in a minute is put my pack roll mat sleeping bag in here just so you can see it for size reference and how everything fits. Um, and then we've got access to the inner point. So what I'm going to do is just uh, sort this door out, get inside, zip it back up. You can join me and we'll have a look around our new humble abode. All right, I've not got the best lighting situation here, but hopefully you can see what things are looking like. So 5'7", if I was to sit up at this highest point, then my hat and my head touches the roof. So it's definitely a bit of a slouchy situation. Uh, what I can say is that actually I can move my arms around a little bit. Um, and the door, which obviously I haven't taken my boots off yet, but you can see if we're gonna sort this out, is basically, there's this nice bit of mesh here um, on, the, on the top for helping with breathability. Whole thing isn't mesh because this is a three season tent. so you know, you should, should need, um, shouldn't need quite the same ventilation as is needed in winter. But um, basically the, the bottom part is just the fabric. You can see we've got this bathtub design as well. So um, the ground sheet extends higher up than just, I don't know, being a base. And what that's helpful for is if you find yourself for some reason in, in water, <laughs> then it's going to uh, just hopefully not get through the, the yellow fabric. Now you can probably see it's quite floppy in here really um, and I, you know I, I have experimented a lot with pulling this tent really tight as tight as it possibly can outside and it still ends up a little bit floppy and I do think that is to do with the elastic um, and what I can do with the elastic points where the inner attaches to the outer is you can double wrap them and I find that works quite nicely um, but generally speaking you know there's there's plenty of space um, for for me but not enough to move around and I wouldn't want to be stuck in it for a long time. So let's just get the camera in here and I can show you the pockets and well there's not much else going on so let's have a look at some pockets and then we'll, we'll start to wrap this thing up. <laughs> Alright welcome in. So we have a pocket here on this side and we have a pocket here on this side. A sizable pocket you know. Phone like four phones in length. So sad to measure things in phone. And then you can see the door, if I was to roll that up, I can clip it with these two points here as well, which is really nice. And then if we swivel around, this is the tent. So it's not the most roomy of places, but it's not designed to be. You know, it's designed to be low profile, easy to use, quick, simple, after a long day, put it up, crack on with it the next day. So yeah, 
no features really. There's a slight hook here, which you could, you know, tie a little something to to make a washing line. Is there one at the other end? Oh, there's not one at the other end. Never mind. Right, let me get my stuff in and we can um, start to roll this forwards. Here we are in the tent then. So I've got my Thermarest Neo Air and my Rab sleeping bag here. And we are on a slope, so forgive me. But I've decided to push the Neo Air right to the back end. And you can see how much space there is here on the porch end, a bit of a shuffling job. So I forgot to mention that there's these two pegging out points here on either side of the porch front. So what that means is you can pull this nice and tight and I'll do that in a second just to conclude this. But basically, if we're doing that, we've got however much that is. Is that like, I don't know, three quarters of a foot maybe? A foot of space there? Um, so there's a little bit of space. More than anything, there's a little bit of width. So you could definitely, in a GIF, fit two, two mats in here. Um, it wouldn't be comfortable. <laughs> but uh, it could work in an emergency. So again, if I push it to the far side, and move that out of the way, you can see how much space there is. I think more than anything, the height is what people are probably gonna struggle with, with this tent, but that's the design of it. You know, it's designed to be low profile, but lengthwise, it seems to be pretty decent. So this is a regular um, Neo Air. And that is what I can show you with that. Let's have a look at the porch now. Just before I show you with my pack, um, you know, if you pull these two points out, it really does help to tighten things up actually. Just completely forgot about those, so apologies. And that obviously just gives you a little bit more headroom and space and builds the structure of the tent. Now let's get the rucksack in. Trusty Osprey Exos Bosch, 48 litres. And what you can see is that actually that's pretty much the only space you've got there. Um, you could definitely keep walking boots there, stove, that sort of thing and cook, but it is tight. Um, and I think it really it depends on sort of what type of trip you're doing, how much space you really feel like you need, but you can fit everything in here. I think that's, that's the reality check. It's not as luxury in terms of space as some tents that I've worked with, but you can work with it. I think that's the main point. And you know, really, I think that sort of leaves me to get to the end of this video. You know, I've shown you all the features, I've given you the facts, the information about the fabrics, about the size, about how everything works. I mean, you can see that I certainly just about fit in this porch. Something to consider though is, you know, if it is gonna be wet and rainy, because that does happen in spring, summer and autumn, particularly in this country, the United Kingdom, then you're not really gonna be wanting to touch the sides. So, you know, for some people, this tent is definitely just gonna to be too tight. For someone like me, it's pretty much just right. Um, but then, you know, on a longer trip, I'd much prefer to have more space. Um, I think it depends how much gear you've got, how long your trip is. I mean, they advertise this as sort of for medium length expeditions. Um, fill in the blank there, I'm not entirely sure the absolute definition of that, but probably, I don't know, a micro adventure, three, four, five days maybe, and you can get away with it for sure. Um, but otherwise, you know, I've, I've been very pleased with the, the trips that I've had with this tent. Um, as I say, it gets cosy, but it does mean you tend to warm up if you get a little bit fresh. Um, and I can certainly operate with it um, or within it with everything that I've got in terms of kit. So that is the Terra Nova Starlight One. I really hope that this has been helpful. Now I review tents that are right at the top end of the sort of spectrum in terms of cost <laughs> and um, functionality and where you want to use them and tents right at the bottom as well. So if you're just starting out um, with your hiking or travel or backpacking or cycling or bike packing expeditions and you're looking for kit, I should have covered something that is going to be right for you. And if there's something you want to see me review, get out and about and use, then please leave it in the comments below and hopefully I can get on that for you. Um, Spend More Time in the Wild, as I say, is all about educating and empowering people to get outside. Uh, we've got all sorts of tips and advice videos there as well. So please do hit subscribe um, and share this video if possible with somebody who is looking to find some kind of kit or understand more about tents. If you're actually not sure about tents, I've got a whole how to choose a backpacking tent video. I've got how to pack a backpack. I've just a bit of everything there, to be honest. So head to our channel, have a look, and uh, hopefully you'll find something that is helpful for you. Now, whether you're going cycling, hiking, backpacking, canoeing, whatever it is that you're doing, stay safe, guys, stay kind. And of course, as always, stay wild. I'll see you soon. <laughs>